Well, howdy there, friends. Today we're embarking on a remarkable journey to catch a glimpse of how the cast members from Benson have changed over the years. We'll be revealing their true identities and ages, and you're in for a real treat as we compare their youthful days on the show to the present year of 2023. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all ready for this ride? Let's get this journey rolling. 1. Robert Guillaume as Benson Dubois Robert Guillaume gained fame for his depiction of the witty Benson Dubois in the contentious sitcom Soap and its offshoot, Benson, earning him two Emmy Awards. In 1985, Guillaume starred in the TV miniseries North and South as the abolitionist leader, Frederick Douglass, a figure who escaped slavery and rose to prominence in the anti-slavery movement before the American Civil War. He also took on the roles of marriage counselor Edward Sawyer on The Robert Guillaume Show, 1989, Detective Bob Ballard on Pacific Station, 1991-1992, and television executive Isaac Jaffe on Aaron Sorkin's brief yet critically acclaimed Sports Night, 1998-2000. Guillaume underwent two marriages, initially to Marlene Williams in 1955, with whom he had two sons, Kevin and Jacques. Despite Guillaume prioritizing his career early in the marriage, they did not legally separate until 1984. His daughter, Melissa, was born in 1980, and he, along with her mother, Patricia, raised her. Subsequently, he wed Donna Brown in 1986, and the couple welcomed a daughter, Rachel. Another daughter, Patricia, born in 1950 to a different mother, was not raised by Guillaume, but was fathered by him. His son, Jacques, passed away on December 23, 1990, at the age of 32, succumbing to complications of AIDS. In 1999, Guillaume experienced a stroke while involved in sports night production at Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. The stroke was deemed minor, resulting in relatively mild damage and minimal impact on his speech. Following a six-week hospitalization, he underwent therapeutic activities, including walks and gym sessions. Guillaume ultimately succumbed to prostate cancer on October 24, 2017, at his residence in Los Angeles, California. Honoring his contributions, Guillaume has a star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame, and on November 28, 1984, he was bestowed a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his contributions to the television industry. 2. James Noble as Governor Eugene Xavier Gatling James Noble gained prominence for his role as the well-intentioned yet often unsuspecting Governor Eugene X. Gatling on the ABC sitcom Benson. Born in Dallas, Texas, Noble was the son of Lois Francis and Ralph Byrne Noble. He pursued studies in both acting and engineering at Southern Methodist University before enlisting in the United States Navy during World War II. Following his military service, Noble honed his acting skills under the guidance of Lee Strasberg. He graced the stages of Broadway and entered the realm of television through soap operas, including The Brighter Day, As the World Turns, The Doctors, As Dr. Bill Winters, and A World Apart. Noble's cinematic endeavors featured notable roles, such as Reverend John Witherspoon in the film adaptation of the Broadway musical 1776-1972. He portrayed various characters as doctors in films like One Summer Love, 1976, 10, 1979, and Promises in the Dark, 1979. Noteworthy roles also included Kaufman, the President's Chief of Staff, in Being There, 1979, Father O'Flanagan in the comedy sequel Airplane 2, the sequel, 1982, Sinclair in A Tiger's Tale, 1987, Chief Wilkins in The Comedic Paramedics, 1988, and Dr. Bailey in Chances Are, 1989. Additionally, he served as the spokesperson in several Pepto-Bismol commercials in the 1970s. Noble took on the role of Larry Appleton's father in the 1980s sitcom Perfect Strangers. In 2005, he co-established Open the Gate Pictures with actress Colleen Murphy, producing and starring in the acclaimed short film Glacier Bay, which received numerous awards at U.S. film festivals. 
Noble portrayed the live-action version of Archie Comics character Hiram Lodge in the movie Archie, to Riverdale and back again, 1990. Married to actress Carolyn Coates from 1956 until her passing in 2005, they shared the joy of raising one daughter. Originally residing in Leonia, New Jersey, Noble relocated to California in 1980. He passed away on March 28, 2016, at the age of 94. A spokesperson for Noble's family revealed that the actor had suffered a stroke the week preceding his demise. 3. Inga Swenson as Miss Gretchen Willomena Kraus Inga Swenson took on the role of the governor's chef, Gretchen Kraus, a fiercely proud German immigrant frequently engaged in verbal sparring with Benson, exchanging insults as a regular occurrence. Gretchen's signature shout from offstage directed at Benson is the emphatic. Early in her professional journey, Swenson held supporting roles in the films Advise and Consent, 1962, and The Miracle Worker, 1962, where she portrayed Helen Keller's mother. Possessing a trained lyric soprano voice, Swenson graced the Broadway stage in productions such as New Faces, C, 1956, and The First Gentleman, 1959. She earned Tony Award nominations for Best Actress in a Musical for her notable performances in 110 in the Shade, 1964, and Baker Street, 1965. As a lifelong member of the Actors Studio, Swenson expressed that her favorite role was Lizzie Curry in the musical 110 in the Shade. Swenson entered matrimony with actor-singer Lowell Harris in 1953, and the union bore two sons, Mark and James. Tragically, James passed away in a motorcycle accident in 1987 at the age of 26. Mark, having retired from the film editing field in motion pictures and television, as well as the financial services industry, is her surviving son. Swenson's passing occurred in Los Angeles on July 23, 2023, marking her departure at the age of 90. 4. Missy Gold as Catherine Cady, Olivia Gatling. Missy Gold took on the role of Cady Gatling, the governor's daughter in the television sitcom Benson. Prior to her portrayal as the governor's daughter, Missy Gold made appearances on Eight is Enough, Fantasy Island, The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries, and Trapper John, M.D. As a former child actress, Missy Gold shared her formative years with fellow actor siblings, including her elder sister Tracy Gold, who played Carol Ann on the 1980s sitcom Growing Pains, and her younger sister Brandy Gold who held a recurring role in the hospital drama St. Elsewhere. Presently, Missy Gold holds a license as a psychologist, having earned a BA from Georgetown University and a PhD from the California School of Professional Psychology. 5. René Aubergenois as Clayton Runnymede Endicott III René Aubergenois took on the role of the haughty, snobbish hypochondriac Clayton Endicott LLL succeeding John Taylor as the governor's chief of staff, starting in season two. Post-college, Aubergenois collaborated with various theater companies, commencing at the esteemed Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. He then traversed between Los Angeles, California, and New York, participating in numerous theater productions. He played a pivotal role in establishing the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles, and the Brooklyn Academy of Music Repertory Company in New York City. Aubergenois contributed as a member of the Peninsula Players Summer Theater Program during the 1962 season. His television film repertoire encompasses The Rhineman Exchange, The Dark Secret of Harvest Home, Disney's Geppetto, Gore Vidal's Billy the Kid, the reimagined A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, and the miniseries Sally Hemings, An American Scandal, 2000. Aubergenois embodied the character Fortunato in an episode of American Masters titled Edgar Allan Poe, Terror of the Soul, 1995. An Emmy Award nomination recognized his performance in ABC's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, he portrayed NASA scientist Dr. Felix Blackwell in the episode Phoenix, 
on NCIS. In 2003, Aubergenois lent his voice to Natori in the English dubbed version of the semi sequel to Hayao Miyazaki's film Whisper of the Heart, titled The Cat Returns. An animated iteration of his character Odo from Star Trek, Deep Space Nine made an appearance in a cutaway joke in Family Guy's Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. The cutaway showcased a more humanoid-faced Odo issuing a threat to Stewie's alleged cousin, Quark Griffin. Aubergenois also contributed his voice to Skylanders, Superchargers. In an interview with Compassion and Choices magazine, Judith Aubergenois disclosed that René underwent chemotherapy for lung cancer in 2018. It became apparent in 2019 that the cancer had metastasized to his brain. Considering the potential serious cognitive side effects, Aubergenois opted not to pursue the recommended whole brain radiation treatment. Residing in California, Aubergenois chose to explore medical aid in dying under the California End of Life Option Act. On December 6, 2019, he spent his final moments with his family at his residence in Los Angeles, reflecting on photographs and enjoying music. Subsequently, he ingested the prescribed medication for assisted suicide and peacefully passed away at the age of 79. According to the provisions of the California End of Life Option Act, death certificates are to attribute the cause of death to the underlying terminal illness rather than the use of life-ending medications. The official cause of his passing was recorded as metastatic lung cancer. 6. Ethan Phillips as Peter Pete, John Downey. Ethan Phillips took on the role of PR man Peter Pete Downey, serving as the governor's high-strung press secretary for five seasons. Phillips initiated his show business journey in New York City, gracing off-Broadway stages, such as Direct Theater, where he clinched the Best of the Actors Festival title in 1977. He also performed at the Wonder Horse Theater, featuring in the premiere of Christopher Durang's The Nature and Purpose of the Universe, and at Playwrights Horizons in a revival of Eccentricities of a Nightingale. Over the subsequent 15 years, Phillips participated in numerous plays in New York, including Terence McNally's Lips Together, Teeth Apart at the Lucille Lortel, Measure for Measure alongside Kevin Klein at the Public Theater's Delacorte Theater and the Broadway premiere of My Favorite Year at Lincoln Center, alongside Andrea Martin and Tim Curry. Additionally, he contributed to new works for Ars Nova, Ensemble Studio Theater, Playwrights Horizons, the Hudson Guild Theater, the American Jewish Theater, and various others. In 1990, he embarked on his Star Trek journey, assuming the role of the Ferengi Dr. Farek in the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Menage à Troy. Subsequently, he portrayed the Talaxian character Neelix on Star Trek, Voyager in 1995, remaining with the series for its entire seven-season duration. Phillips also made a cameo appearance as a holographic nightclub maitre d' in the 1996 film Star Trek, First Contact and took on the role of a Ferengi pirate captain in the Star Trek Enterprise episode Acquisition. His contributions extended to voice work for several Star Wars franchise video games, including 2000's Star Wars, Force Commander, 2001's Star Wars, Galactic Battlegrounds, and 2003's Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. 7. Dee Dee Khan as Denise Florence Stevens Dee Dee Khan took on the role of Denise Stevens, the amiable, cheerful, yet unsuspecting personal secretary to Governor Gatling, succeeding Marcy Hill starting in Season 3 of Benson. Khan marked her debut as an actress in the 1960s, her noteworthy characters emerging since the 1970s when she first gained prominence encompass Lori Robinson in You Light Up My Life, 1977, Casey Kissick lent her singing voice, and Frenchie in the feature films Grease, 1978, and Grease 2, 1982. 
In January 2016, she made a cameo appearance as Vi in the Grease live television special on Fox, establishing herself as the sole actress to feature in all three screen adaptations of the franchise. Moreover, she has assumed diverse roles in numerous other television productions. In 2019, Khan participated as a contestant on the 11th series of the British television show Dancing on Ice. At the age of 67, she became the oldest participant ever on the show, alongside her professional partner Wukash Rojiki. She exited in week four, as the judges opted to save Saara Alto and Hamish Gaiman in the skate-off. Khan's adopted son, Daniel, is on the autism spectrum. On November 13, 2008, she was appointed as the national celebrity attendee for Autism Speaks. Previously, she served as an investigator for the National Alliance for Autism Research, now integrated into Autism Speaks. She has contributed to benefits for the Foundation for Educating Children with Autism, FECA. On September 27, 2008, Khan delivered a performance alongside David Shire and Lynn Wintersteller at a benefit event for Barack Obama in Nyack, New York. She entered matrimony with her first husband, Frank Kahn, in 1975, and they concluded their marriage in 1978. Since 1984, she has been married to composer David Shire. 8. Caroline McWilliams as Marcy Hill Caroline McWilliams takes on the role of Marcy Hill, the governor's personal secretary, and Benson's closest companion in the mansion, with whom she would often share her thoughts. Marcy frequently faced challenges in matters of the heart, but she eventually tied the knot and departed from the governor's service early in season three. McWilliams' television appearances span every decade from the 1960s through the 2000s. She served as a regular player on Guiding Light as Janet Mason Norris from 1969 to 1975. In 1977, she portrayed a woman assisting an immigrant in staying in the country through a marriage of convenience on Barney Miller. During the second season in 1978, she had a recurring role on Soap. On the stage, she graced productions such as the musical Boccaccio, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, The Rothschilds, and performances with the American Shakespeare Festival in Stratford, Connecticut, and the New York Shakespeare Festival. Following this, she made numerous appearances in television comedies and dramas, including Kojak, Quincy, M.E., The Incredible Hulk, Weepstake, Project UFO, Hill Street Blues, Night Court, St. Elsewhere, Cagney and Lacey, Sisters, Two Episodes, Home Improvement, Murphy Brown, and Judging Amy, Three Episodes. In 1989, she played the spectral wife, Claire Pritchard, in the short-lived comedy series Nearly Departed. Additionally, she featured in several made-for-television movies, including The Death of Ocean View Park, 1979, Rage, 1980, The Gift of Life, 1982, and Sworn to Silence, 1987. In 1982, she starred in Cass Malloy, a CBS television sitcom pilot that aired as a one-off that summer but did not lead to a regular series. However, it served as the foundation for She's the Sheriff, which aired in first-run syndication from 1987 to 1989 with Suzanne Somers in the lead role. McWilliams was formerly married to and divorced from Michael Keaton, with whom she had a son, Sean. She passed away from multiple myeloma at her residence in Los Angeles, California, on February 11, 2010, at the age of 64. 9. Billy Bird as Mrs. Rose Cassidy Comedian Billy Bird took on the role of Rose Cassidy, the governor's housekeeper and chef in seasons 6 and 7 of the sitcom Benson. She is credited with an appearance in a 1921 film, Grass Widowers, but it is not clear if this is accurate. Otherwise, she entered the film industry in 1950, later making a brief uncredited appearance in The Odd Couple as a chambermaid. Her only line was, Good night, which was directed at Felix Ungar, who responded, Goodbye. Bird was frequently cast by director John Hugus and featured it in many of his 1980s and 1990s films, such as Sixteen Candlers, Home Alone, 
and Dennis the Menace, the latter two of which both paired her with veteran Hughes actor Bill Irwin playing her husband. She also played the role of Mrs. Lois Feldman in Police Academy 4. Her final film appearance was in 1995's Jury Duty, alongside Pauly Shore. Bird entertained troops in Vietnam with her unique variety act, Flying High with Billy Bird. In recognition of her efforts, she became one of the few women ever to be appointed an honorary member of the Green Berets. Bird was wedded to Edwin Sellen until his demise in 1966, and they had three children. Bird passed away on November 27, 2002, in Granada Hills, California, at the age of 94 after battling Alzheimer's disease for several years. She rests in peace in the Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. 10. Louis J. Stadlin as John Taylor Louis J. Stadlin takes on the role of John Taylor, Governor Gatling's chief of staff in the first season of Benson. Stadlin was replaced in the second season by René Aubergenois. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York, boisterous voice artist Alan Swift, Stadlin studied acting under Sanford Meissner and Stella Adler. He initiated his Broadway journey portraying Groucho Marx in the musical comedy Minnie's Boys in 1970. Other prominent Broadway characters include Senex in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, Banjo in a revival of The Man Who Came to Dinner, Milt in Laughter on the 23rd Floor, and Dr. Pangloss in the 1973 rendition of Candide. Stadlin has received two Tony Award nominations throughout his career. The Time of Your Life saw a revival on March 17, 1972, at the Huntington Hartford Theater in Los Angeles, where Stadlin, alongside Henry Fonda, Richard Dreyfus, Ron Thompson, Strother Martin, Gloria Graham, Jane Alexander, Richard X, Slattery, and Pepper Martin featured in the cast under the direction of Edwin Sherin. His memoir, Acting Foolish, was released by Bear Manor in 2009. Stadlin's cinematic credits encompass Portnoy's Complaint, 1972, Serpico, 1973, The Verdict, 1982, To Be or Not to Be, 1983, Windy City, 1984, and In and Out, 1997. From Robert Guillaume's iconic portrayal of Benson Dubois to the diverse and memorable characters brought to life by the supporting cast, each actor has left an indelible mark on the landscape of television history. We've explored their early careers, significant roles, and, in some cases, their personal journeys beyond the small screen. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content that takes you back in time and explores the fascinating journeys of your favorite TV stars. Until next time, stay tuned for more Then and Now Retrospectives. Thank you for being a part of this nostalgic adventure with us.